Hello children. Hello sir. Now, what have we studied in the previous modules? We studied about force, types of force, effects of force and also what we studied in the last module. We studied about inertia and Newton's first law of motion. Now children, in this module, we will study about Newton's second law of motion and a very important term called as momentum. I think you all have heard this term momentum. I think everyone has heard. Anyone who plays a sport or watches a sport must have heard this term or have seen this term in newspaper articles also. Also while people are doing commentary. They say this team has a winning momentum. Now what is this momentum? Let us find out. In order to understand this, let me take an example and let us take our class students. We have Izhar and Gurpreet. Let us ask the question to them. Let us suppose they are playing and both are hit by balls. Izhar is hit by a plastic ball, soft plastic ball and Gurpreet is hit by a leather ball and the ball they hit with the same velocity. Now, who do you think will get more injuries? Yes, Izhar. Sir, Gurpreet will get more injury due to leather ball. Due to the leather ball. But I said both are moving with the same velocity. But why this happened? Let me explain you this. Now, in order to explain you this, let me take the concept of momentum. What is momentum? It is the quantity of motion contained in a body and it is equal to the product of mass and velocity of a body. So, momentum is represented by the symbol small p and small p is equals to mass into velocity that is m into v. So, what is the formula for momentum? It is P is equals to mv. What about its unit? Yes, Gurpreet, what is the unit of mass? Kg. Kg. And Izhar, what is the unit of velocity? Sir, meter per second. Meter per second. Let me put the values. So, momentum, what will be its unit? It will be Kg meter per second. That is the unit of momentum. Now, let me elaborate further the concept of momentum. Let me suppose that there is a bicycle which is moving at a speed of say 20 meter per second and a person is hit by the bicycle. The person will get injuries but it will not be life threatening. Let me take another example. Now, a truck is moving at a speed of 5 meter per second and if a person is hit by that, the probability of the strike to be life threatening is much more. Why? It is because in case of the bicycle, mass was very less, so momentum was less. But in case of truck, the mass is very high, so the impact or momentum will be very high. I hope you have understood the concept of momentum. Now, let me move further to a very, very important thing. Do you remember which was the first law we did? It was Newton's first law of motion. Now, children, let us study about Newton's second law of motion. First of all, let me give you the statement. It is the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the force applied and it takes place in the direction of applied force. Now, you must be thinking what is this law? I have not got the whole statement. What is the statement? So, let me break the laws for you to understand. I am not breaking the law as such and making a new one. What am I saying? Let me break the statement so that you understand better. It says rate of change. Now, rate means with respect to time. So, it will be change in momentum 
by time taken and it is proportional to force. So what can I say? Force is proportional to change in momentum by time taken. Now in order to explain you better, let me just take a case in this. Let us consider we have a body of mass m, initial velocity u. Now what will be its initial momentum? It will be equal to m u. Now a force is applied on this body for a time t and the force applied is f. So that its velocity changes from u to v. Now v is its final velocity. So what will be its final momentum? m v because the final velocity is v. What about the change? Change will be equal to final momentum minus initial momentum that is mv minus mu. Now let us put these value in the law statement. What was that? It is f is proportional to change in momentum by time taken. So f proportional to mv minus mu by t. Now f is proportional to m is common. So m in bracket v minus u divided by t. Now do you remember the first equation of motion? What was that? v equal to u plus a t. Now from that what about this v minus u by t? What was that equal to? It was equal to a that is acceleration. So if I put a in place of v minus u by t, what will I get? I get f is proportional to m a and if I remove the sign of proportionality, I have to put a constant and the constant is k. So f is equal to k m a and if k equal to 1, f equal to m a that is force is equal to mass into acceleration. That means force is equal to the product of mass and acceleration of a body. Now what about the unit of force? Now Gurpreet, what is the unit of mass? Kg. Kg. Now Izhar, what is the unit of acceleration? Sir, meter per second square. Meter per second square. Let us put the values. So what will I get? The unit of force is kg meter per second square. Instead of writing this whole kg meter per second square, what we write? We write Newton. Newton is the SI unit of force and 1 Newton is equal to 1 kg into 1 meter per second square. Now let us define 1 Newton. So the force applied on a body is said to be 1 Newton if a body of mass 1 kg moves through with an acceleration of 1 meter per second square then the force applied on the body is said to be 1 Newton. It is the SI unit of force. Now we studied about force, the SI unit of force, second law. Now you must be wondering, we did second law but what about its applications? Because when we did first law, we did some applications. So what about the applications of second law? Now let me give you the first example or first application of Newton's second law of motion. That is an application which I think majority of you people have tried because it is related with a game which is very popular in our country and the game is cricket. A cricket player lowers his hand while catching a cricket ball. Why he does that? Because see what is he doing? When he is lowering his hand, it is increasing the time interval of the momentum to get zero. That means momentum will take more time to become zero. And more time taken by momentum to become zero 
lesser is the force. So less force acts on the hand and the hand will not get hurt. This is why a cricket player lowers his hand. The second application is regarding a thing which we must use and it is seat belt. Why are seat belts provided? Now see, in case of an accident, the whole of the momentum becomes zero in a very short span of time. Now, if I have seat belt, what will happen? The seat belt will increase the momentum time to reduce to zero. That means momentum will be reduced to zero in a longer time. So momentum takes more time to reduce to zero, less force. That means the person can remain safe. Now let us take the third example and it is related with long jump. In long jump, the person falls on sand. Why are we using sand? Because the sand increases the time of momentum to be reduced to zero. So momentum is reduced to zero in a longer time, less force act and the person remains unaffected or unhurt. If we are using a pakka floor, what will happen? The momentum reduces to zero very fast. So what will happen? A large amount of force will act and the person may get injuries. Now let us take the last example. I think you must have seen this case that a karate player can break a pile of wood with a single stroke. How this happens? See what is he doing? He just applies all the force at one instant. So what is happening? The whole momentum of the body is reducing to zero in a very short time. That means a very, very large force is acting on the body in a very short span of time. This much force can easily break the pile. That's why a karate player can break. So children, what we studied in this module? We studied about the concept of momentum. The unit of momentum which is kg meter per second square. We studied about Newton's second law of motion which is the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the force applied and it takes place in the direction of applied force. We found out the formula for force. What was that? F is equals to ma. We also did the applications of Newton's second law of motion. Now, in the next module, we will study about Newton's third law of motion. Thank you, children. Thank you, sir. Dear children, in this module, we studied about momentum. That is, it is the product of mass of a body and its velocity. And it has the same direction as that of velocity. We studied about Newton's second law of motion, which states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the force applied and it takes place in the direction of applied force. Now children, before going to the next module, you have to answer the following three questions correctly. Number one, the formula of momentum is option A, P equal to MV, option B, P equal to MA, option C, P is equal to M divided by V or option D, P is equal to V divided by M. Question number two, which of the following relation is correct? Option A, 1 Newton is equal to 1 gram into 1 meter per second square. Option B, 1 Newton is equal to 1 kg into 1 meter per second square. Option C, 1 Newton is equal to 1 kg into 1 centimeter per second square. Option D, 1 Newton is equal to 1 gram into 1 second square. Question number 3, according to Newton's second law of motion, option A, F equal to MA, option B, F equal to M divided by A, option C, F equal to MV, 
ऑप्शन डी नन ऑफ दीज 